The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Hell <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food, Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks, in sandwiches, and in hot dishes. And hidden in that swell cheese flavor are important nutrients from milk. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical main dishes. Tomorrow, get Velveeta, the cheese food of Kraft quality. Well, it's almost midnight in the little town of Summerfield. The streets are quiet and deserted, except for one lone figure. It's our pudgy friend, the great Gildersleeve, wending his way home after an evening of fun and song with the Jolly Boys. Oh, I had a real nice time tonight. Jolly Boys are a swell bunch of fellas, all right. Even Judge Hooker isn't so bad. Not his fault he's such a big bag of wind. <sighs> nice to be getting home, though. Little bed's gonna feel much. Well, there's a lamp on in our living room. Wonder who's up at this hour. Playing the radio so late. Marjorie. Hello, Uncle. What are you doing up so late? Do you realize it's almost midnight? It is. Yes, it is. Now get right up to bed, young lady, immediately. You should have been asleep hours. Marjorie? Yes. Have you been crying? What's the matter, my dear? Nothing, Uncle. It's just that I'm so happy and the music's so beautiful. Yeah, uh, well, it's late, my dear, and you have to go to school tomorrow. I'm afraid we'll just have to turn the radio off now. Oh, Anki. I'm sorry, Marjorie, but a girl your age should have eight hours sleep every night. Anki. Yeah? Please sit down for a minute. I want to talk to you. Now, Marjorie, we can talk in the morning. You really should... Please, Uncle Mort. Well, all right, my dear. Now. <laughs> Anki, did you ever have the feeling that you were just starting to live for the first time? That suddenly everything in the world had become beautiful? And everywhere you went, you heard violins. Violins? Well, no, not exactly. It's a wonderful feeling. Sometimes you're happy. Uh-huh. Sometimes you're sad. Oh. But even when you're sad, you're really happy. Do you understand what I mean? Uh, oh, sure, of course. <sighs> uh, Marjorie, who have you got a crush on this time? It's not a crush, Uncle. I'm really in love. Oh, sure. Who is it? That Wally Hoff boy? Wally Hoff, that callow youth. If you, uh, I'm in love with someone who's sophisticated, charming, well-groomed. Well-groomed? Eh, couldn't be Wally Hoff. His shirt tail's always hanging out. <laughs> well, what boy is it? He's not a boy. He's a man. What? Who is he? Our new French teacher. Oh, my goodness, Marjorie. Aren't you being a little silly, a crush on a teacher? Andre is a man I can look up to. Andre? That's his name, Andre Marcel. Marcel? Sounds like a French barber. <laughs> He's wonderful. Now, Marjorie, this whole thing is ridiculous. A young girl like you. I'm 17. That's too young to be falling in love with some middle-aged school teacher. What if he is 27? I love him. <laughs> uh, Marjorie, let's be sensible. If you must fall in love, why don't you pick out a boy your own age? How about Ben? You used to like him. Oh, Ben, sweet. But when he walks in a room, he just doesn't make bells ring. Bells ring? <laughs> What do you want, a good humor man? <laughs> you just don't understand, Unky. I'm not a child anymore. I'm a woman. And I'll love Andre Marcel until the end of time. You'll do no such thing. <laughs> I realize, Uncle Mort, you're only trying to do your duty. Marjorie? But I must tell you that nothing you can say or do will make any difference. I love Andre and, well... I'm sure that he'll love me one day. If you don't stop carrying on this way, I'll see that you drop out of that French class and take Spanish. I won't take Spanish. You will. I won't. Young lady, you go to bed. I won't take Spanish. I won't. Oh, my goodness. Why couldn't she have a woman French teacher? Andre Marcel. <laughs> Huh? What's the matter with you? Why, you've been sitting here all evening and you've hardly...
Bartley said boo. Oh, I'm sorry, Adeline. Boo? <laughs> Not very flattering to a girl when a gentleman caller doesn't pay her any mind. Adeline, I have a problem. You do? Now you tell Adeline what's putting those furrows in your little old forehead. Well, it's Marjorie. What's the trouble with her? She's in love again. My goodness, is that all? She's in love with one of her teachers at the high school. Well, now, I wouldn't worry. Every schoolgirl goes through that. I know I did. Why, I fell madly in love with my history teacher just because he had a cute little mustache. Hmm. I remember my history teacher, Miss Simpson. She had a mustache, too, but I didn't fall in love with her. <laughs> now, I'm sure that Marty will get over it. I don't know if she will or not. Never seen her take it like this before. Last night, she didn't sleep. Today, she just picked at her food, walked around the house like a zombie. Well, that's just the way I was, but I got over it. You did? Yes, a young fellow my own age came along, Stonewall Holloway, and I soon forgot all about that history teacher. Youth called to youth, and I answered. Hmm. Isn't there any young blade here that Marjorie might be interested in? Well, there's Ben... He's a boy that runs a filling station. Marjorie's been falling in and out of love with him since she was 12. But I think he's getting a little discouraged. Well, maybe if you got them together again, they might rekindle the flame. Well, I... I didn't think I could care for Stonewall either, but he carried me away like a tidal wave. Oh, well, Ben's no tidal wave, but... <laughs> could ask him over, I guess. Certainly wouldn't do any harm. And Throckmorton, uh, maybe there's another reason Marjorie's in love. What's that? It's spring. Huh? In the spring, a young girl's fancy lightly turns to love. Yeah? That goes for older girls, too. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, spring's the time for romance. That's when sweethearts think of getting engaged, then getting married. Uh, Well, thanks for the advice about Marjorie. You've been very helpful. Uh, Good night. (laughs) I declare, I wonder why he left in such a hurry. Be right with you. Yeah, just act kind of casual like I just happened to drop in there. Oh, good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good morning, Ben. Just came in for some gas. All right. That's the reason I came in. Need gas. Uh Sure. (laughs) How many? Uh, Well, just a minute. I'll check the gauge. Uh, It's funny. Seems to be full. (laughs) I guess I don't need any. (laughs) Oh, well, okay. (laughs) See you next time. Yeah, Maybe you can wipe my windshield if it isn't too much trouble. Oh, I'll be glad to. And, Ben, we haven't seen much of you lately. Uh, Why don't you drop over sometime? Thanks, Mr. Gillisleeve. I will sometime. Here, that's that's pretty clean now. Want me to wipe the inside, too? Oh, yeah, yeah. Very good idea. Um, Why don't you come over and see us real soon, Ben? Well, I... Of course, I don't want to rush you, but how about tonight? Gosh, I don't know. I was going to go bowling tonight. I don't want to rush you, Ben, but we'd sure like to see you. Everybody's been asking me what became of Ben. The whole family. Bertie, Leroy, and Marjorie. Marjorie? Asked about me? She was talking about you just the other night. She was? Yeah. Marjorie thinks a lot of you, Ben. Well, I don't know. She didn't act much like it last time I was over. Huh? Well, all women are a little flighty, but we understand them, don't we, my boy? Well, I'm not sure I do. <laughs> I know Marjorie will be glad to see you, Ben. Well, I'm not so sure. After what she said the last time I saw her. Huh? What'd she say to you? Drop dead. (laughs) Oh, well, she she was only kidding. Oh, I don't know. She said it twice. (laughs) A girl talks like that to a fellow Ben. It shows she's really interested in him. It does? Sure. If she wasn't interested, she wouldn't care if you dropped dead or not. (laughs) Gee, I never thought of it that way. I speak from long experience, Ben. When women get mad at you, that's a good sign. It shows they really care. Well, if that's the case, Margie must be crazy about me. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you say, Ben? Well, I'll take a chance, I guess. That's the spirit. Goodbye, Ben. See you tonight. Uh, well, 
it's nice spending an evening at home, isn't it, children? Yeah, it's all right. Don't you think it's nice, Marjorie? Marjorie. What? Oh, yes. What are you doing way over there in the corner? Just thinking. I know. I bet she's thinking about that French guy, Monsieur Marcel. You shut up. <laughs> Bonjour, Mademoiselle. Oui, oui. <laughs> you will be. Leroy, that'll do. Uh, you staying home tonight, Marjorie? I guess so. Well, that's good. Why? Why? Uh, oh, no particular reason. Just nice to have you here, that's all. Uncle Mort, what are you... Bell. Well, I wonder who that is. I'll get it. No, I'll get it, Bertie. Can't imagine who it is. Well, good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, what a surprise. It's Ben. What? Come on in, Ben. Marjorie, it's Ben. Hi, Ben. Hello, Leroy. Hello, Marge. Hello. Oh, Ben. Glad you happened to drop by. Uh, but this morning... You yeah, sit down, Ben. <laughs> Make yourself at home. Thanks. Uh, certainly like old times having Ben over here, isn't it, Marjorie? Yes. Hey, you're uh, looking swell, Marge. How you been? All right. Um, how's school? All right. Oh, she just loves school, especially French. Leroy. <laughs> Uh, ben, maybe you and Marjorie would like to uh, go to a movie. It's okay with me. How about you, Marge? Uh, no, thanks. I have some homework to do tonight. In fact, I should be doing it right now. Oh. Well, okay. I, I wouldn't have come over if your uncle hadn't invited me. Oh. I thought so. Uncle Marge! No, Marjorie. You... I wish you'd stop trying to arrange my life. Look here, young lady. You're still... I'm perfectly sorry. capable of handling my own affairs. Well, guess I better be going. Stay right here, Ben. Yeah, you keep out of it. I don't have to. I won't stand I I've had enough of this, young lady. You go to answer to me. You understand? Uh, good night, everybody. Guess I'll go bowling. Ben, come back here. I won't be treated like a child. Ben! I'm an adult. Get her. Leroy. Nobody understands me in this house. Andre would understand. Oh, I should have gone bowling with Ben. <laughs> Back to the Great Gildersleeve in just a minute. One smart way of keeping the food budget in line is to use up the leftovers. Glamorize them into another good dish the family will go for. And you can turn that trick easily with a rich-tasting cheese sauce made with Kraft's Cheese Food Velveeta. With delicious Velveeta sauce, you can stretch leftover chicken or fish or seafood or ham or veal into another swell main dish that the family will applaud. Here's all you do to make that wonderful sauce. In the top of your double boiler, melt one half pound of Velveeta, the cheese food with a rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. You can use the half pound Velveeta package, or you can slice off a half pound from your two pound Velveeta loaf. When the Velveeta has melted, stir in one fourth cup of milk and season the sauce to taste. That's all there is to making Velveeta sauce to stretch leftover meats. And say, is that sauce licking good on vegetables and eggs, too? What's more, Velveeta sauce is mighty nutritious, rich in valuable nutrients from milk. Better get your refrigerator stocked with Velveeta for both thrifty cooking and snacks and sandwiches. Velveeta's so handy to have, so good, so nutritious. It's made by Kraft, you know, and you can depend on Kraft quality. Relations are somewhat strained around the Gildersleeve household this morning. At the moment, the great man is having breakfast with Leroy and Marjorie. A very quiet breakfast. In fact, Marjorie isn't talking at all. Uh, sleep well last night, Marjorie? Marjorie, your old uncle is talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Leroy? It's sure quiet around here. Quiet? I hadn't noticed it. <laughs> Young man... You finish your breakfast. You may go to school. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Or as they say in French, Chevrolet Coupe. Leroy. <laughs> oh, dear. That boy. Uh, Marjorie. Marjorie, I just invited Ben over last night for your own good. All right. If you don't want to talk to me, you don't have to. It's all right with me. Marjorie. Yes, Anki. Do you know I don't want you to be unhappy, don't you? Yes. 
I just think when a girl like you thinks she's in love with an older man, well, it just leads to unhappiness. That's all. And you're liable to get hurt. What makes you think that? It stands to reason that an older man like this Andre Marcel wouldn't be interested in a schoolgirl. Well, Anki, I wasn't going to tell you this, but I think Andre's in love with me, too. What? In fact, I'm sure he is. What do you mean? Did he say so? No, but a girl can always tell. Uh-huh. It's just the way he acts around me. He's so gentle and understanding. Oh, I see. And yesterday, when I got up to recite, I didn't know my French verbs. And he didn't get angry at all. He just gave me the sweetest smile. Oh, yeah, he's madly in love with you, all right. You just don't understand, Uncle Moore. My dear, I'm afraid you're just letting your imagination run away with you. Mr. Marcel is just being nice to you, that's all. That doesn't mean necessarily that he... Excuse me. Yes, Bertie? Here's the mail. Oh, thank you, Bertie. Yes, sir. Uh, Excuse me. Let's see here. What's this? What's the matter, Anki? It's a letter for me from Andre Marcel. Oh, Anki! I wonder what he... Open it! What did he say? Wait a minute. Dear Mr. Gildersleeve, I hesitate to write you this note, but after giving it much thought, I decided it's the best thing to do. This is a matter which cannot be postponed any longer. May I call upon you this evening? I must talk to you about Marjorie. I hope you'll understand. Sincerely... Oh, Anki, I was right about Andre. Huh? He wants to see you about me. He does love me. He does? Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> How are you this fine spring morning? Yeah, not too good. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, the advent of spring does seem to affect some people. It causes sluggishness, loss of appetite. I feel all right, but spring has certainly done something to Marjorie. Well, they say it does have more effect on young people. Now, if I might make a suggestion, I have a spring tonic here. That... Peavy, a spring tonic is not going to do Marjorie any good. No, it's a very good tonic. It contains oil of juniper, sassafras root. Peavy, uh... if you'll just listen for a moment, Marjorie's in love. Oh. Well, that happens pretty often in the spring, too. Mm-hmm. In fact, that's the time of year I met Mrs. Peavy. You might say it was the spring that made me fall. <laughs> That was a little witticism. I know. Uh, Spring made me fall. I heard you the first time. (laughs) You don't understand, Peavy. Marjorie's serious about this thing. And she's in love with him. Mrs. Peavy was serious, too. I don't care about Mrs. Peavy. Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't think that's a very nice thing to say. Well, Peavy, I didn't mean... Mrs. Peavy may have her little peculiarities, but none of us are perfect. But you don't understand... And she is my wife. I know that. Well, don't forget it. (laughs) And you can take it from me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mrs. Peavy has many fine qualities. She's loyal, thrifty, neat as a pin. Peavy, you misunderstood me. I'm sure Mrs. Peavy is the most wonderful wife in the world. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Oh, keep off. But, Judge, Marjorie's too young to even be thinking about getting married. Now, we don't know that she is thinking about it. Well, she thinks she's in love. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she's going to get married. Look at you. If you married every woman you thought you were in love with, you'd have more wives than Carter has pills. (laughs) Some of your women were pills. (laughs) This is no time for your heavy-handed humor, you old goat. All right, all right. Well, the first thing to do is not to let Marjorie know that you oppose this idea. But, Judge, suppose when this Marcel fella comes over tonight, he asks me if he can get engaged to Marjorie. Well, don't oppose that either. What? No, no, no. Don't get yourself in a tizzy. Even if they do get engaged, it'll be several years before they could get married. And I'm sure that Marjorie will come to her senses long before that. Yes. On the other hand, if you try to break up this romance, you'll only bring them closer together. Why, they might even elope. Elope? Oh, my goodness. So the thing for you to do is act like you're very happy about the whole thing. (sighs) As far as that goes, Gildare, remember the time will come when Marjorie will get married. 
that someday somebody will marry Leroy. I doubt that. <laughs> you might as well face the facts, Gilda. They don't stay children forever. Someday little Marjorie will be slowly walking down the aisle, dressed in white. Yes. You'll be escorting her. A little sad, perhaps, but proud. Okay, Judge. We'll all wipe away a tear when the organ starts to play that sweetest song of all. Oh, really? <laughs> Yes, my dear. What time is it? It's almost eight. Oh, I'll be right down. Uh, uh, well, he'll be here pretty soon. Hope I'm doing the right thing. Uh, I guess I am. The judge thinks so. Wouldn't want him to elope. How do I look, Anki? Oh, you look lovely, my dear. Oh, I'm so excited. So am I. <laughs> Uncle Mort, I want you to know I think it's wonderful the way you're taking this. Oh, well, it's the way you want it, my dear. That's all that matters. I wouldn't want you to elope. I mean... You're uh... sweet. And I'll never forget you for this, even when I'm a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't believe this is happening to me. Neither can I. Well, I'll wait upstairs. You call me when he comes. Yeah, all right, my dear. Mrs. Marjorie Marcel, doesn't that sound wonderful? Wonderful. Oh, dear. I wonder if Bertie's got everything ready. Bertie! Come. Yes, Mr. Gillespie? Bertie, you'll have the tea ready to serve when Mr. Marcel gets here. Yes, sir. And don't forget the French pastry. You ought to like that, being French. Yes, sir. And Bertie, be sure your maid's cap is pinned on. Wouldn't want it to fall on the tea. <laughs> yes, sir. Something wrong, Bertie? No, sir. I'm sure going to miss Miss Marjorie. What? Yes, I'm sure we'll miss her. But, Bertie, she's not going to be... House won't be the same without her. Look, Bertie. I'll come in to serve breakfast, and there'll be that empty chair at the table. Bertie. Little old empty chair all by itself. <laughs> empty. <laughs> Bertie, this is silly. She isn't even engaged yet. Well, I hate to see her go. I'm sure we'll miss her. Oh, Mrs. Hi, Uncle. Oh, hello, Leroy. Mr. Marcel here yet? Oh, sure. He's hiding under the couch. Huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Leroy, I want you to watch your manners tonight. The French are a very polite race. Okay. Say, Unc. Yeah? When Marjorie gets married, can I have her room? Leroy, nobody said Marjorie was going to get... Oh, no. there he is. Bertie, someone is at the door. Coming. Yes, sir, I'm sure. Go, Mr. Mr. Gildersleeve in? Yes, sir. Come in. Thank you. He's right in there. Gee, he's a big guy. There's two of us. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, yes. Uh, oh, uh, good evening. I'm Mr. Marcel. Uh, how do you do? This is my nephew, Leroy. Marjorie's brother. Guess you'll be seeing a lot of him. Hello, Leroy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. We're going to have some tea and French pastry later on. Thought you'd like French pastry being French. Oh, well, my parents were French. I was born in Boston. Oh, guess I should have got baked beans. <laughs> well, I suppose you're wondering where your little Marjorie is. She's upstairs. I'll call her. Oh, well, if you don't mind, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'd rather speak to you alone. It would be easier that way. Oh, yes, I suppose it might make you a little nervous having other people around at a time like this. Well... That's all right. I understand. Uh, Leroy, will you excuse us, please? Sure. <laughs> Leroy, that means you're supposed to leave the room. Oh, well, I get it. <laughs> well, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, I don't know quite how to begin this, but... Uh, I think when a teacher feels this way about one of his students, it's only fair to consult with a parent. That's right. Parents are usually pretty understanding about these things, my boy. And I want you to know that whatever is best for Marjorie and you is all right with me. Oh, I'm glad you feel that way. You know, I think a lot of Marjorie. Yeah, so I understand. <laughs> That's why I've been so concerned lately about the way she's been neglecting her work in my class. Ah. Uh? Her uh, work in your class? But I thought... She hasn't been doing her French lessons at all. 
Her mind seems to be on something else. Uh, uh, yes, it has been. You know, many times students have problems that we teachers know nothing about. And I thought you might know what the trouble is. Yes, I think I do. You see, Marjorie's in love. Oh, so that's it. Well, I know what she's going through. I, I happen to be in love myself. With a girl back in Boston. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, it's nice being in love, especially with a girl from Boston. <laughs> well, I hope you don't mind my coming over like this. Not at all. You've been very helpful, and I'm sure that Marjorie will be back to normal uh, very soon. Oh, that's fine. I feel better now. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> well, I'd better be going, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're going? Oh, yes. I'll take you to the door. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what a relief. Oh, but what am I going to tell poor little Marjorie? Hello, Anki. Uh, Marjorie, uh, Mr. Marcel. I know, Anki. I was listening from the stairs. Oh? I guess I've been awfully silly. No, my dear. You're just young, and it's spring. Well, our little family is still together. <laughs> Come on, Marjorie, let's have some tea. We might as well eat that French pastry. Here, have a Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be right back, folks. There's a good old American custom that we all enjoy occasionally, raiding the refrigerator. And one of the favorite foods of those hungry raiders is Kraft's famous cheese food, Velveeta. They can spread golden Velveeta on crackers or slice it thick for husky sandwiches. Or those who prefer a toasted snack love the way Velveeta melts in less than a minute. And it's good to know that Velveeta is a wholesome snack, rich in fine nutrients from milk. Digestible as milk itself, too. So keep a loaf or package of wholesome, good-eating Velveeta in your refrigerator all the time. Get genuine Velveeta made only by Kraft. Well... A strike, all right. Yeah, <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> Say, you're a pretty good bowler, Ben. Thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Guess I was just lucky. Uh, you're next, Marjorie. Okay. Here's your ball, Marge. Now, take your time. Yeah, go on, Marjorie. Throw it. Oh, oh my goodness, Marjorie. You missed all the pins. You gotta take your time, Marge. Oh, Ben, I did take my time. No, you didn't. You rushed it, and that's why... <laughs> Drop dead. Yeah, well... <laughs> Things are back to normal again. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Richard Legrand, and Ben Alexander. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Uh, folks, the Red Cross Drive is still on. There's still time to give, and your contribution is needed to carry on all the fine Red Cross work. Give now and give generously. Good night. <laughs> For a main dish that saves you money, saves you time, and pleases the folks, get Kraft Dinner. In just seven minutes cooking time, Kraft Dinner gives you swell macaroni and cheese. It's fluffy light macaroni with fine cheddar cheese flavor through and through. And the cost is only a very few cents a serving. Every box of Kraft Dinner gives you both ingredients for that swell macaroni and cheese that you cook in seven minutes flat. So for fast meals, for good meals, for thrifty meals, get Kraft Dinner. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.